person gets an upset, and then suddenly you've got two keyboard players. And then you got to do what we did with Proto Windows at Heat Wave. Oh, uh, yeah. I think that didn't end up happening, but it almost did. It came really scarily close. Yeah. Taps has been playing the Raster quite a bit recently. He did really well, I think, in a tournament the other day, resetting Soul, oh, on Soul um, Rifle. Go to school, yeah. Yeah, the thing they run Academy. And then he also went to Momocon, getting second at that and taking Cake Assault to game five with his raster. Wow. Yeah, I've heard uh, Emre Soul Rifle saying this is a very scary raster. And I actually didn't see any of the stats earlier, so this is the first I'm seeing of it. Yeah, and if he's vouching for it, you know it's got to be good. Mm hmm. That oh. gold call on the F Smash. Not sure if that was intentional, but ended up working out, Giga falling into it. Yeah. The Taps Punish game has been incredibly on point, especially in his set with Darai earlier. A lot of his punish is just incredibly clean. You can tell this is a very refined raster. We base out the Lariat there on landing. Definitely yes, must have seen some of the other sets. It's not his first time seeing or playing against the Hodon, just having that awareness to, you know, be mindful of his recovery. Right. And just baiting it out. Because that's kind of the thing about Hodon. He's he's really weird. He does have a lot of like long lasting hitboxes that you really have to respect. And if you're not doing that, he's gonna hit you with a Ooh, Giga SD's uh... there. I, he's shaking his head in the player cam. Definitely mm -hmm. not an intentional input. But Tap Scott is gonna take that to the bank. Incredibly strong lead from him right now. Especially when he doesn't have to worry about trying to get those kills. They're just handed to him. Right. Ooh, Giga interrupting that with a dare and potentially getting the kill off this on the side. I think it's interesting that Giga opts to try to do like throw down the Sweat Spirits. Because I was always wondering, like, that seems like a good strategy, but it takes too much time. But it has it has been one of the main edge guarding tools he's been relying on this bracket. So it's clearly there's some matter to it. Tapscott taking an incredibly comfortable game one there. Waiting out the roll there, getting a setup, up air, up smash off the top. Doesn't even need the sweet spot on right. stage like forest floor or... Do you know what the, the reskin is called? The Olympia uh, stage? Crystallosis. Gotcha. Really good up tilt there. Okay, we're gonna be going to Gates game two. I kind of like this. We're trying to just hang on to these stocks slightly longer. Yeah, these blast ones are very, very big. Certain characters absolutely love it. Oh Nade off the top? No. Yeah. Taps got held down on that. Got out of that just fine. He was also a little bit too low for it to work out. I think it was mostly Giga just being too low when he started. Yeah. But I, I understand the idea. For he sure. didn't get he didn't get swept up to it immediately as well. He kind of like not only jumped, but just like he didn't get hit by the first couple hits. Mm -hmm. very, very good attempt to set up there. Using the dash attack to catch Giga going low and then using Dare to pop him forward and then going for the F smash, but Giga just barely escapes it. Yeah. Tap's doing a lot more aerial approaching, especially off these platforms, using moves like Dare to just catch him slipping. And the Super Monkey Ball is going to be taking with the bad DI. It's yeah, really that hard to... smash is deadly. It's hard to see it coming a lot of the time. Yeah, it's incredibly fast, and it especially was... with something that kills that potently. Yeah, like you would think it's obvious, but no, it just, it just goes so fast. He's up there in like three frames or however long it is. Yeah, Chapscott. Chapscott tries to not deal with that just because of the lingering hitbox coming out, and Raster doesn't have that much disjoint apart from Bear and Dare. Right. Oh boy. Good parry on that. He's definitely familiar with these recoveries that Giga's doing. Oh. Gonna be tossing the Giga right back off stage. Ooh, double parry there. Yeah. But that just takes out Slipstream, that lingering hitbox. They're sending the wrong way, and Ooh, up he dies for that raw up Giga just fakes, takes full advantage of that and takes the lead here in game two. Yeah, Monkey Boss is going crazy this game. Yeah, I can definitely see why Giga likes this matchup, especially because how fast you can kill Raster. Mm -hmm. That charged up B is doing wonders. It really is. Yeah, it's a scary move. It can be kind of hard to tell exactly when it's going to kill, but when it kills, it really kills. Especially when you have your setups into it, much like the dare upbeat that we saw earlier in his sets. Yeah. Which is definitely a DI read, but it, it still gets the job done. For sure. Basically like an aerial up smash. There's, there's a handful of them. 
Okay, I'm gonna be getting dizzy for that. There are no sweat spirits. Taking the one right there. There aren't too many spot spirits out right now, so could limit a few of his options. Ooh, Taps got just barely avoiding that charge, F Smash. Yep. And catching the DI. Definitely closer than game one was, but Taps got still looking incredibly dominant. Yeah, it's tough. Us is able to kill off of such few mistakes, and it's kind of true for Hodan as well, but it's a lot harder for Hodan to actually get his openings. Yeah, when you get that center angle flipper hitbox on the up to, on the up air, it's really, really hard to DI, especially mm -hmm. when you can just hit fall that and immediately get a, either F smash or up smash, depending on which way you go. For Definitely sure. a staple of Raster's confirms. Yeah, Giga's been landing a lot with a Lariat, which I definitely understand is like a get off me tool, much like landing Raster Nado if you don't parry it. It's a lot faster than that, too. Right. But Tapscott's just been waiting it out and just being able to take full advantage of it. Just like a reset, basically. It's like trying to mash Shine out just advantage of Setter. The quick get off me tool. Puppy? Ooh. Yeah. Ooh, there it is. Very Down. good confirm. Yeah, the down B cancels are extremely strong for Odon once you're actually able to get a hang of them. Yeah, Giga's still got a lot of his bag of tricks that he can pull out against Tapscott. It may be looking like he's down 2-0, but he's looking pretty strong in this game 3. Especially from the setups we've seen earlier in his set against Penguin. Yeah. Ooh, I think he attempted the up smash there and doesn't tech that down smash. Yeah, really unfortunate. Gonna be bringing the game back to even. Yeah, Tapscott just fully waits the landing Lariat there, just knowing that he's not sure if he's gonna go into Dizzy or not with the amount of Sweat Spirits. Waiting it out and just trying to punish it. Better option than just contesting it straight up. It's gonna be running up. That was such Ooh, that, a smart. That one beats out the, 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 the... That was a brilliant recovery sequence. Just kind of using every tool Hodon has in his arsenal so fast. Tapscot didn't really have a chance to react to any of it. Yeah, he tries to challenge that landing one with up tilt, but Giga gets out of it just fine. Just holding on to that charge. A B off the top. Yep. Is again, slight lead for Hodan, or uh, for Giga. Got a lot of life but, going in this game. But maybe not for long. Tapscot's gone and back off stage. Yeah, just one setup, and it's basically going to be even. Giga's trying to make this lead count as much as possible. Oh, that might be it. Yeah. Incredible setup from Giga. But on his job, it's so weird. There's so much like stuff he can do out of it. And then sometimes it just does nothing. Okay, getting the cancel with the charge kick, and there we go, monkey flip. Classic. So, Giga getting a point on the board here. Gonna have to make a big reverse there, yo. He wants to prove the power. See this of... counter pick goes. No Tempest, no FD, no Frozen. Going to Jewel's Veil as the starter. Interesting. This is Tapscott's counter pick. I think that makes sense. Yeah, it's just a good neutral stage. I know Absa and Rash are like a lot of the same stages. Mm -hmm. Definitely understand why this is a good counter pick. For I generally Rash. see this as like a good air character stage. Absolutely. Just for like all of them. I like it a lot for Ellie too. Not so sure for Palm, but I definitely see the benefit. Jeez, wow. These setups have been incredible from Giga. He's showing a lot of life after being down 2 0. Yeah, I really like proving the power of that up B. You know, once you kind of have the hang of some of the ways to actually get into it and to charge it, incredibly potent. There it is. Oh! Ooh, I think he flubbed that. Was that meant to be an up B? I think that was a misinput. I, I feel like that totally would have killed him. Would have been two stocks in 40 seconds. Yeah. Either way, still a great lead. Gig, I mean, Tapscott with that jump call out there. Doesn't get the sweet spot. Doesn't matter. Yeah, he gets the second one. That one's going to kill. We're getting there's an up B or an up air. You're doing a lot of down beats right now. It's kind yeah, of Tap is up. just resetting him, just 
doing a couple punishes and then just dropping it, knowing Giga is going to try and do a panic option. Ooh. Got so much mileage of that in second stock, but Giga still holds the lead. Good landing Nato there. Parry's out of it. Doesn't get much success out of it. Yeah. Oh, tries, tries to, to go high. Yeah. That's Bam, tough. Misses the plat. I mean, even then, like, that was, platform was really close to just disappearing. Yeah, it was definitely a risky play on his part. Game's looking very even now, but one good hold on edge guard can take this out. Bring it to a game five. Yeah, ooh. Not trying to cancel again. I feel like it would have killed, but... Either a flub or just kind of realizing maybe this won't actually work in this position. Half Scott off stage. Play here. The gig is doing these upbeats, but he's not getting the charge out of it. Probably yeah. holding a little bit too early. There it is, charging at that time. And just barely taking that game from what could have been a small comeback from Pap. Tap was looking incredible early on in this set, having game one with a three stock and then taking game two barely. Giga is crawling back right now, showing he wants dominance in winner's finals. Yeah, and again, just trying to prove the power of this as a new character. And I think he's doing a great job of it right now. Definitely. He's had so much success with it recently, and he just wants to continue that all his yeah. way to winner's finals to play against Eevee. I can definitely see Spirit Tree working out for Tapscott. That's his first character like Raster, the side of the top last ones being so thin. But at the yeah. same time, it's like the rock wall pick where it's very, very risky. You could die off the top, so the upbeat incredibly quickly against him. He has gotten almost every single one of his kills off the top this set yeah. too. Pretty much every single one is just Super Monkey Ball. It's been the I, back I think Tap's just it. really comfortable in his punishes. For he sure. wants to show that he's he's the one who's gonna succeed out of it. You know what I mean? Right now, it is a good start for Tapscott. Trying to get these sweat spirits out in a good position. And Tap's just giving him that part of the stage, not wanting to contest it. Not yeah. wanting to accidentally make one big risky play, and then he loses his lead. For sure. Just playing it safe. And, Goes ah. for the up, he gets challenged for it. Yeah. Very risky with Raster. If you miss that, you take a huge amount of damage. But I can see why he wanted it with the stage of the thinnest top blasts in the game. Mm -hmm. Really just trying to extend that lead. Getting the clap. Tries to up be early, get back on stage. <gasps> Giga steals no that back. No way! 50, that was a 56 after the hit? Incredibly early kill, taking the lead on that. That's insane. We haven't actually seen Charge per, uh, get that many kills this bracket, but there it is. It's the first time it's coming into play in this set. He got a couple against Penguin, but he's he's bringing it out right now when it matters the most. Yeah. One or two good neutral wins, and there could be an up off the top in his favor. For sure. Okay. Great game. clap to catch that up mm -hmm. Game five, last stock. Kind of rough landing. It is Raster. I can definitely see Tap bringing this to Ethan with one good neutral win. Yeah, yeah. Tap's got totally not out of it. At the same time, it's still pretty scary. Oh my god, okay. the sour uppy just killing off the top. Giga cementing his place in winner's finals with Hodon. Out of nowhere, just gonna take that and yeah. Let's I, go, Giga. I can definitely tell Tap's a bit confused by that. Mm -hmm. That must have just been some DI, because he didn't expect that. What was that, like 60%? Yeah, 68. 68 before the hit. Yeah. On a stage like like Spirit, you can definitely see it killing early, but it was just uncharged, using it as a recovery option. Clips him with the hit of it, holds straight left, and just uh, dies off the top. Yeah. I actually don't know the DI angle, but I would assume it's like slightly out and up for where it actually sends you. Yeah. I think he usually would have wanted to hold right, but instead mm -hmm. he just gets clipped off it. 